Hi friends, welcome to Ajay Automation channel. Today we are going to see about the most common Selenium techniques asked in interviews recently. So these uh, concepts are almost asked in most of the interviews. So I'm sure this will be really helpful for your upcoming interviews as well as your automation career. So let's quickly start. The first question is, how do you verify whether the web application page source or page title does not contain any bad status error codes like 404 or 500? Okay, so we can verify this using assertion okay so we can verify whether the web application page source or page title contains any phone or for using assertion technique assert equals so assert equals returns boolean value true or false in the output okay it checks for expected result and actual result are equal okay so here what i'm doing is driver dot get page source contains phone or four i am going to check whether the web applications page source contains any 404 error okay so let's quickly see the application so currently there are no 404 errors in the application okay so this checks for 404 error and there are no 404 error meaning this condition is false okay that is what i am expecting this condition becomes false and our expected result is also false so our test case should get passed okay so let's run this program and see the output So this web application is launched and our test case is passed because the expected result and actual result are same. That's why our test case is passed. So let's see the next question. So how do we increase our test execution speed? So there are many ways to increase our test execution speed. One of the ways is use headless browser. Okay. So it saves a lot of test execution time. Okay. Two things we have to remember here is Chrome options class and passing argument headless in these Chrome options. Okay, so Chrome options class is helpful for us to set the Chrome driver browser specific capabilities. So what capability we are setting now? Headless mode. Okay, let me execute this program. And we are just launch, going to launch this website in headless mode. Okay, so let's see how long it is taking, how much execution time it is taking. So I ran the program. If you see here, browser is not getting launched, but we are able to see the test case got executed successfully. Okay, in headless mode, we won't be able to see the real browser getting launched, but the test case will be still getting executed. Okay, so it took around 3.1 seconds to complete test execution. Now what I'll do, I will disable this headless mode and I'll execute this program in real browser again. So in headless mode, it took around 3.1 seconds. So in real browser, let's see how long it is taking. Okay, so now we are able to see the browser getting launched, browser UI, etc. So it took around 3.3 .3 seconds, which is like 0 0.2 seconds more than headless mode. This is just a single test case. We are just launching the website. It took around 0 0.2 seconds more than headless browser mode. So you can now guess the difference it takes between headless and the real browser. So consider you are executing your regression test suit for around two hours, okay, using real browsers. But if you are using headless arguments, you can complete test execution in like one and a half hours. You can uh, almost save around 30 minutes test execution time. Okay. So that is the purpose of using headless browser mode to improve our test execution speed. Okay. So let's see the next question. How do you launch browsers in particular dimension? This is also we can achieve it using Chrome options arguments called as window size. So some applications we launch in full mode right full view so some of the applications there are requirements like this we have to launch browser in particular dimension at that time what we have to do is we can use chrome op options and pass arguments window size okay let me execute in this particular window size okay. so let's see in what browser size now it opens so it should be almost maximized mode okay so let's X so command this line and execute in a different smaller size. Okay. So I have reduced from 2560 to 1000 width and height. Okay. So 1440 to 800 reduce. So if you see here, the browser dimension got reduced because I am providing a smaller values here. 
Okay, this is how we can launch browsers in particular dimensions. We have to use Chrome options and pass arguments window size. Okay, so let's see the next question. Upload file. So how do you upload file using Selenium? This is a really important question. So we can just pass or upload file using send keys method. Okay, here I'm going to launch this website and I'm going to upload an image file which I have placed in my local folder. So the image file name is sample image. I, am, I have placed that image in users folder. Okay. So let me execute this program and let's see whether the file is getting uploaded successfully. Okay. Send key system method I am using to upload this file. So if you see here, so using send keys, I have passed the image file, image path of the image. Okay. So then I'm doing click operation to upload this image in this website. So if you see here, the image got uploaded successfully. Okay. So we have just used send keys method and just use click method to submit this file. This is a sample website. Yeah. And our test case is passed. Okay. This is an important interview question. How do you upload file? So the first technique I'll use is send keys and there are different techniques like using robot class, auto ID feature, auto ID feature, etc. Okay, those are also other options to upload file. Okay, if send keys is not working, you can go for robot framework or other techniques. Okay, so let's see the next question. How do you handle synchronization in Selenium? Okay, so in our web application, certain web elements or links might take longer time to load. At that time, we have to go for weights concept. So basically, there are two types of weight, implicit and explicit weight. Implicit weight is applicable throughout the Selenium project, whereas explicit weight is applicable only to particular web elements. So it is best recommended to use explicit weight because we are, we are going to wait only for that particular web element instead of waiting for commonly for all the web elements. So we are saving some amount of time here by using explicit weight. So it is best recommended to use explicit weight. Okay, so consider this web application and this dashboard page. So this dashboard page might take longer time to load sometimes. Okay, so only Selenium will perform operations. Only these elements are visible. So at that time, we will go for explicit weight, making sure these elements are visible in this page. Only then Selenium will be able to perform operations like click, get text or submit, etc. Okay. So what I am doing after logging in, I am using an explicit command called as expected conditions dot visibility of element located. Okay. Meaning I'm making sure this element is visibly located only then perform operations like click or submit. Okay. That is the purpose of using explicit weight, wait for particular web elements to be appeared on the screen. Okay. This is how we handle synchronization in Selenium. Okay, so let's see the next question. So how will you handle drop downs in Selenium? So let me show the UI of a drop down. So as you see here, this is a drop down UI and what we have to do, we have to identify the drop down and then we have to perform operations like click, okay, to select values from the drop down. So this can be handled using select class. Okay, so using select class, we have three options to select values from the drop down. Okay, one is select by visible text, select by value, and select by index, other other techniques. So select by visible text meaning we directly select the drop down value name. Similarly, select by value also. Okay, so if you see the code, you might understood. So this is the drop down, right? Let me inspect this drop down. So if you see here, so the value is given here okay select by value meaning it directly select the values from this drop down values okay index meaning position so this is the zeroth position albania this is the first position so if i am giving select by index as one Al algeria will be selected okay so let us quickly execute this program and see so let me comment this line and let me enable index so i have to select drop down value which is in the fifth position so what should be selected what is in the fifth position 
one second two three four so angulia will should get selected so this is the zero portion okay so zero one two three four and five okay so let's see it's getting selected So as you see here, Angulia got selected from the top one, which is in the fifth position. Okay. So here what we have given. So the given index is fifth. So Angulia got selected. So this is how we handle drop downs in Selenium using select glass and the with the help of three options. Okay. Select by visible text, value, and index. Other methods to select values from the drop down, which is provided by this select glass. Okay. So let's see the next question. So how will you handle alert message, which is appearing in a new window? So let me quickly show the UI of an alert message. So, okay. So when I enter some customer ID and click on submit button, an alert message get appears in a new window. So I have to click on okay button or cancel button here, or I have to get this text. So what can we do here is, Initially, we have to switch the Selenium control to this alert message. For that, we have to use switch to comment. Okay. So if you see here, initially, I am going to switch my Selenium control to this alert box using switch to method and get the text of the alert box. Okay. So also, there are two methods to remember here. One is accept method and one is dismiss method. Okay. So accept method clicks on OK button in the alert box. Okay, this button. Dismiss method clicks on cancel button in the alert message. Okay. So for handling alert message, we have to remember three things. First thing, we have to switch the Selenium control to the alert message using switch to command. And for clicking OK button, we have to use accept method. And for clicking cancel button, we have to use dismiss method. Okay, so let's quickly run this program. So here I am clicking OK button because I am using accept method. Okay. So OK button got clicked successfully. Okay, so this is how so our test case got passed. This is how we handle alert messages in Selenium. So these two concepts, drop-down handling and alert message, is very important in terms of interview. Okay, commonly asked questions in most of the Selenium interviews. Okay, so how will you verify success message? Okay, so let's see the Selenium code and let's see the UI as well. Okay, so now I am going to Upload an image, okay, and validate the success message after successful upload. So here, upload a file or image, okay. So I am uploading an image and I'm clicking on submit button. So there is one message gets displayed after this image upload is successful. So we are going to validate this success message, okay. How can we validate this? There is a method called is displayed in Selenium, which will help us to validate this scenario okay so let's see the selenium program so initially we'll have the upload image code because after uploading we are just validating the success message okay this is the is displayed method in selenium which helps to validate this test case okay so we will make sure after this file upload is successful this success message is also displayed because most of your web application will be having success message so we will, you might be submitting forms or uploading something and we have to validate this success message as well. 
So we can handle that using each displayed method. Okay, this is also very important interview question. So how will you validate web elements or how will you validate su success messages? We can validate using each displayed method. Okay, so let's see the next question. So how will you handle keyboard and mouse interactions? So keyboard and mouse interactions meaning drag and drop, double click. Okay, so there are certain keyboard and mouse interaction, right? So how will you handle that using Selenium? We can use actions class. Okay, so for handling keyboard and mouse interactions, we have to use actions class and we can perform operations like drag and drop, double click, context click, etc. Okay, so this is also a very important interview question. So just try to write some Selenium programs on keyboard and mouse interactions before your interviews. Okay, so let's see the next question. So how will you scroll down using Selenium or scroll to particular web element and again scroll up? Okay, this question was recently asked in one in interview. So basically you have to scroll to particular web element and you have to again scroll up and you have to write the Selenium program in the interview by sharing your screen. So how can we do that? Let's quickly see. So initially I am launching a website. Okay. Okay. So there is a method in Selenium called as scroll into view, which will help us to scroll to this particular web element. Okay. So consider I'll share the UI. Consider I need to scroll to this element, Facebook. Okay. So we can use scroll into view and we can directly scroll to this particular web element. So I'm declaring the web element as a field link and I am writing the path of the web element. Okay, this path. So where Facebook is located, I'm locating it as a web element. Okay, and then what I'm doing. So I am using JavaScript executors help and using scroll into view method to scroll to this particular web element. Okay, this is really important. We need the help of JavaScript executor as well to scroll to this particular web element. Okay, now we have scrolled to this particular web element. Now we have to again scroll up. For that, we have to use the window.scrollby method and provide the parameters. Okay, since we have to scroll up, I have provided parameters in the negative manner. Okay, this is how we can scroll to particular web elements and again scroll up. Okay. So this question, as I said, recently asked in one interview, write the Selenium program to scroll to particular web element and you have to again scroll up. So uh, we have come to the end of the... So we have come to the end of today's topic. So I hope this video will be really useful for your upcoming interviews. So as I said, these are most commonly asked Selenium techniques recently, uh, almost in most of the interviews. So uh, please watch the whole video and uh, please do subscribe my channel, Ajay Automates, for more Java training related videos and automation testing videos. So thank you. Have a good day. Bye.